everyone. I am here with your Bible reading. Sherm colored us another picture. I'm going to show it to you. I really like this one. Really tired. I just kidding. We woke up today. I just had a lot of pain. I'm really tired today. It's pretty. I really like the shoe. Hold that up again. Oh, okay. I thought he caught a couple more, but I guess not. Okay. So today we're going to go into Romans, into chapter 11, verses 1, sorry, chapter 11, verses 13 through 36, and it'll be Paul speaking here in Romans today. So let's get started here. Paul says, I am talking to you Gentiles, and as much as I am the apostle to the Gentiles, I take pride in my ministry in the hope that I may somehow arouse my own people to envy and save some of them, the Jewish people. For if their rejection brought reconciliation to the world, what will their acceptance be but life from the dead? If the part of the dough offered as first fruits is holy, Jesus, then the whole batch is holy part of Jesus, that means you are also holy. If the root is holy, Jesus as the root, so are the branches, Jesus being the root. If you have Jesus in your life, you're part of the tree, you're the branches, Jesus is the root. You are in part of the tree. The root needs the branches to make the tree, and the branches need the root. They need each other to make holy together. If some of the branches have been broken off, and you, though a wild olive shoot, have been grafted in among the others, if you're like different from the other people, like if they're all Jews and you're a Gentile, or, you know, different people in another way, just whatever. A wild olive shoot have been grafted in among the others, and now share in the nourishing sap from the olive root, do not consider yourself to be superior to those other branches. If you do consider this, you do not support the root, but the root supports you. You will say then, branches were broken off so that I could be grafted in. Granted, but they were broken off because of unbelief, and you stand by faith. Do not be arrogant, but tremble. For if God did not share the natural branches, he will not spare you either. Consider therefore the kindness and sternness of God. Sternness to those who fell, but kindness to you, provided that you continue in his kindness. Otherwise, you will also be cut off. And if they do not persist in unbelief, they will be grafted in. For God is able to grant them in again. After all, if you were cut out of an olive tree that is wild by nature <clears throat> and contrary to nature were grafted into a cultivated olive tree, how much more readily will these, the natural branches, be grafted in their own olive tree? So if it's saying if you fall away, from the tree, if you're broken off from the holy tree, if you're broken off from God, if you leave God, just like the prodigal son that left, if you leave, but then later want to come back, want to come back to God, He will let you back in. Of course, He will wholeheartedly welcome you back. You're His child. Just like you would welcome your child back with open arms. 
so God would to you because you are his child. All Israel will be saved. I do not want you to be ignorant of this mystery, brothers and sisters, so that you may not be conceited. Israel has experienced a hardening in part while the full number of the Gentiles has come in. And in this way, all Israel will be saved, as it is written. The Deliverer will come from Zion. The Lord loves Zion. He will turn godlessness away from Jacob. And this is my covenant with them, when I take away their sins. As far as the gospel is concerned, they are enemies for your sake. But as far as election is concerned, they are loved on account of their patriarchs. For God's gifts and his call are irrevocable. Just as you who were at one time disobedient to God have now received mercy as a result of their disobedience, so they too have now become disobedient in order that you too may now receive mercy as a result of God's mercy to you. For God has bound everyone over to disobedience so that he may have mercy on them all. Number one, do the doxology. Oh, the depths of the riches of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable his judgments and his paths beyond tracing out. Who has known the mind of the Lord? Or who has been his counselor? Who has ever given to God that God should repay them? For from him and through him and for him are all things. To him be the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. And that is where we're going to stop with Romans. And now we are reading Psalm 22, verses 1 through 18, for the director of music to the tune of The Doe of the Morning, a Psalm of David. You know, this is going to be a beautiful song. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me, so far from my cries of anguish? My God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer. By night, but I find no rest. Yet you are enthroned as the Holy One. You are the one Israel praises. In you our ancestors put their trust. They trusted and you delivered them. To you they cried out and were saved. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and not a man, scorned by everyone, despised by the people. All who see me mock me. They hurl insults, shaking their heads. He trusts in the Lord, they say. Let the Lord rescue him. Let him deliver him since he delights in him. Yet you brought me out of the womb. You made me trust in you even at my mother's breast. From birth I was cast on you. From my mother's womb you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near, and there is no one to help. Many bulls surround me. Strong bulls of Bashan encircle me. Roaring lions that tear their prey open their mouths wide against me. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart has turned to wax. It is melted within me. My mouth is dried up like a pot shirt. My tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. You lay me in the dust of death. Dogs surround me. A pack of villains encircles me. They pierce my hands and my feet. All my bones are on display. People stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes among them and cast lots for my garment. That 
as the end of Psalm 22 for now. And you see who this psalm is talking about. You can really, really tell at the very, very end who this psalm is talking about. This psalm is talking about Jesus. This psalm is about Jesus. Let me read the bottom part to you again. Remember when Jesus was on the cross and he was so, so thirsty and he wanted something to drink and they soaked up some water on that thing and but they put vinegar on it instead of water and gave it to him in his mouth. And then he said, it is finished. They were being awful to him, horrible to him. They beat him so bad. So let me read this part to you again. Remember Jesus being up on the cross like that. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. Because remember how bad they beat him. My heart has turned to wax. It has melted within me. Imagine how, how sad and broken he was. But the people, what they were doing to him. He wasn't sad for himself. He was sad for the people. My mouth is dried up like a potsherd. My tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. You lay me in the dust of death. He is extremely thirsty. His mouth is so dry and he knows he's about ready to die. Dogs surround me. He knows he's about ready to die and everybody is surrounded around him at the cross. A pack of villains encircles me. The people around him, the guards and the, the ones that put him up there, they're encircling him and they're being mean and shouting at him and they're, you know, they're casting lots for his clothes and everything. They pierce my hands and feet when they put the nails in his hands and his feet, nailing to the cross. All my bones are on display because he was naked except for his undergarment. People stare and gloat over me. Everyone's looking at him up on the cross. They divide my clothes among them and cast lots for my garment. They divided his clothes and cast lots for his garment. So that song is about Jesus. And we have one proverb today, and that is Proverbs chapter 20, verse 7. The righteous lead blameless lives. Blessed are their children after them. And that was Proverbs chapter 20, verse 7. Okay, guys, that was our Bible reading for today. I hope your guys' hearts. That is everything for today. Um, the prayer requests are the same. I won't go through the whole thing. I'll just go through and read the names off. Um, Sherman Crabtree, Michael Cairns, Logan Cairns, Linda Thacker, April Thacker, Cindy Welsh, Jim Welsh, Dora Harper, Judy Thompson, Judy Osborne, Barb Post, Zach Kirby, Elizabeth Jeffries, Jim Mitchell, Rhonda Karshner and Abby Myers, Jimmy Myers, and I believe that is it for now. Thank God, right? I want to see the prayer list go down, not up. So that means prayers are answered. So I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Let's bring those souls to Jesus. And God willing, we'll see you guys again soon with another Bible reading. Bye guys. God bless.